Hey everyone, this is David Brown, and a few days ago, on November 7th, 2022, I made a trip to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary for a day of hawk watching, so I thought I would make a video going through my photos and explaining the birds that we saw, some raptor ID tips and other bird ID tips, and just show you what a great time you can have this time of year up at Hawk Mountain. So let's start out with a photo of me. This is sunrise, which was around 6.30 a.m., and big smile on my face ready for a fun day of hawk watching and you'll notice what I'm wearing first of all it's a t-shirt it was very very warm uh, the temperature was up around 70 degrees so not too often that you get t-shirt weather at the north lookout of Hawk Mountain in, in November especially with northwest winds so kind of um, unusual weather pattern but just an absolutely beautiful day and you can see I was representing Braddock Bay with the shirt and Ashland with the hat always good to represent your favorite hawk watches when you visit other ones. I always like to get to a hawk watch early, not just to make it a whole day, which is important too, I think, but because there's usually some good songbird activity around in the morning. So here we have a dark-eyed junco perched in a tree up at the North Lookout. And this is sort of a quintessential winter bird. There were a decent number of common ravens around throughout the day, including this one. And the one thing I like about Hawk Mountain is a lot of times the birds are down below you and you can get a photo of the bird with a nice background so not everything's against the sky like it is at the other places I'm usually hawk watching. Here we have a look at the top side of a turkey vulture and you can see that nice red head. As this songbird flew by I got a flash of white so I just immediately went to the camera to try to figure out what it was and it actually ended up being a snow bunting. Kind of an unusual bird to see flying by and especially a lot of times you'll see them in flocks. This bird was just by himself but a nice surprise. Here we have another turkey vulture that really shows the underside coloring, you know, dark on the coverts and the body, but silvery or white here on the trailing edge of the wings and the tail. And because of how clean this bird is, this is a juvenile, you can see all the feathers appear to be the same age, though it is starting to show a little bit of wear and tear here and there. And here's a look at another turkey vulture, and you can see this one's a lot more ragged in the wings. This one looks like an adult. And here's uh, some train locomotives going by but again it shows you how much of an angle that you're sometimes looking down into the valley. Here we have a northern harrier going by and the one thing you'll see about my northern harrier photos is they're pretty much all off to the side. It seems that a lot of the harriers that we saw would come towards us but they wouldn't come directly overhead they would kind of jump off the ridge and cut across the valley and this one to me looks like an adult female. You can see underneath it's not really showing the orange that you'll see on the juveniles it's more white underneath with a bit of streaking on the upper breast so adult female here we have an adult bald eagle and the one thing i want you to pay attention to as i show these photos is the way that the light can kind of impact things so you can see the difference between where the light is hitting like at the tip of the bill and here on the lower half of the underside and the tail versus the rest of the bird that's in shade sometimes that can influence your ability to identify birds or to see what the actual colors are. So notice how the shadows affect the way that you see the overall colorations of the birds. Here we have a juvenile bald eagle. So this one would have been born this summer. You can just see it's really fresh. You see this completely dark head, even trailing edge to the wing because no feathers have been replaced. And again, you can see where the sunlight's hitting, it's almost a light brown color compared to where it's shade where you just get this really big contrast between the white of the underwing and the completely dark underside to the body. Here we have an adult red-tailed hawk, which is one of the main migrants in this later season time period. So when you get days with northwest winds, you can even get up to a couple hundred red tails on a good day. And we'll go over those classic red tail field marks we're always looking for. So first of all, red tails are in the Buteo genus, so they have the typical shape, and this is really the shape a lot of other raptors are compared to in terms of how long the wings are, how long the tail is. You know, it's kind of a medium length tail, somewhat broad wings. And uh, the way this bird's angled, maybe it makes it look a little bit stockier than it is compared to if it's directly overhead, the wings would look a little bit longer. But anyway, for those field marks we're looking for, the dark patagial bars here in the shoulder area. 
and the belly band. All red-tailed hawks show those two features. And this one is an adult, so we also see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail. Here we have an adult sharp-shinned hawk. So we just talked about how red tails are in the Budio genus. Sharp-shinned hawks are in the Accipiter genus along with Cooper's hawks and Northern Goshawks. We know this is a sharp-shinned hawk because the tail is very squared off, although from this angle, you can't really tell that too well. But more so, just look at the face. They have kind of a cuter face where the eyeball looks uh, a little bit bigger because it's kind of a big eye on a smaller head. Just an overall cute profile to the way the eye looks along with the beak. And we know it's an adult, and Cooper's hawks and sharp-shinned hawks have very similar plumages. The adults have this kind of orange barring underneath. And one other way from this angle that we know it's a sharp-shinned hawk and not a Cooper's hawk is that this dark coloration from the head stretches all the way along the back of the neck onto the back of the bird. If this were a Cooper's hawk, we would see a pale nape, meaning the back of the neck would be pale. It wouldn't be this continuous color. So a couple different field marks we can use along with the small size of the bird to identify this as an adult sharp-shinned hawk. Here we have a black vulture. So it has a bit of a different coloration than the turkey vulture. We see the white is only here at the wingtips, not the whole trailing edge to the wing. A little bit stockier bird, um, kind of a gray head rather than the red head of the turkey vultures, shorter tail. And we notice that this bird has a big yellow tag on the wing in the patagial area. And it's code 106, which actually I went to Hawk Mountain back in August and saw this exact same bird. So that was kind of cool to see that he was still in the same area. And when I noticed that this bird had a wing tag, I just started shooting off photos, hoping that I'd be able to read the tag. And thankfully I got a few photos that did show the code on the, on the tag. And these birds are tagged that way that observers like me or others can uh, read the tag at different places and report in. So they can use that to track the, the, uh, the way that the birds are traveling. It's much cheaper than putting something like a GPS transmitter on the bird. And here's the top side of the same black vulture. And actually, usually the wing tags show on the top side as well. It looks like this one may have broken off. Um, but we can see that coloration. Again, the white is only at the wing tips. The rest of the trailing edge of the wing is dark. And we see they have a black tail compared to the more white or silver tail of the turkey vultures. But it's a very short tail with a very straight trailing edge. And you can even see the toes of the bird sticking out behind. Here we have another exhibitor, but this one is not a sharp-shinned hawk. This one's a Cooper's hawk. So this bird just looks a little more stretched out. So the wings look a little longer, the tail looks a little longer, the head looks a little bit bigger and sticks out more. Um, this is just classic juvenile Cooper's hawk with this kind of big hooded appearance. You can see this uh, sudden cutoff between the brown head compared to the uh, rest of the white underside. This teardrop streaking is typical of these juvenile Cooper's hawks. Kind of big teardrops and then um, almost no markings on the, the lower belly down here. Uh, for the tail, the outer tail feathers are a bit shorter, so it gives it a it gives the, ta the tail a rounded appearance. And you can see the, just the gradation there between the length of the different tail feathers. Kind of a, a big head and uh, a little bit more of a fierce look to it, the way that the, the eye and the beak come together. Here's a look at the top side of the same juvenile Cooper's hawk. And you can see the eye color. They have a kind of a lightish, maybe a yellowish eye compared to the red eye of the adults. Very brown on top compared to the more grays or blues that you'll see on the adults. And that other field mark I mentioned about the color of the top of the head onto the back, that only applies for adults. So since this is a juvenile, that's not a useful field mark. It uh, doesn't exist on the juveniles. Here we have a Budio streaming high overhead. And the first thing that jumps out to me is these pale crescents near the wingtips. And just the overall shape, it's a little less bulky looking. It's a little bit skinny. You know, the tail looks a little long. So um, this is actually a red-shouldered hawk. Um, we'll see plenty of photos coming up of red-tailed hawks. But red-shouldered hawks, just to me, they always look just a little bit skinnier. And um, a lot of times we're looking for these translucent crescents near the wingtips that you can see it even shows when the bird is tucked into a glide like this. Here we have another red-shouldered hawk. That last one was a juvenile, but this one's an adult. So we can actually see some of that orange coloration and also the black and white patterned on the wings. Here's a songbird that flew by. And actually 
We were able to identify this by call. We heard it coming first and then I spotted the bird and attempted to get some photos because this species was coming up rare on eBird. So I wanted to get a documentation shot. Uh, this is a pine siskin. Now from the photo itself, maybe it would be hard to say that for sure, but you can get a sense of kind of a very pointy bill, maybe a little bit of the pattern on the wings and stripy underside. Not the best photo in the world, but it was at least something. But the main way we identified it was just from hearing the call notes. And since it was a somewhat um, quiet morning, there wasn't too much wind. We were able to hear a lot of call notes. And so um, we were able to hear a lot of the songbirds coming before we actually spotted them. Here's another juvenile red-shouldered hawk. So again, we can kind of see the shape is slightly different than the red tails. It's just a little less bulky looking, a little skinnier looking. Um, we see that there's no dark patagial bars. And we see it has kind of what might look like a belly band, but we see the streaking actually extends kind of all the way up onto the upper breast. So it's not that belly band right in the middle that the red tails show and then a very clean upper breast. And again, we see those translucent crescents near the wingtips that are one of the best field marks to use, especially from a distance. You can see kind of a medium length tail with banding on it. Again, this is a juvenile red-shouldered hawk. Here's another one that we heard coming and I was pretty excited about. We had actually heard one earlier in the morning that I never saw the bird. This one heard it coming, called it out, and it came across right in front of us. This is an evening grosbeak. And this is a species that we don't see every winter. Two years ago in 2020, fall of 2020, we had a good eruption year for them. And again, this fall, 2022, we're seeing decent numbers. Um, had a number of them down here in Delaware, where I'm filming this video right now, and um, just showing up at feeders throughout Pennsylvania and, and surrounding states and all over the place. So it's a pretty good fall for evening grosbeaks, and we were glad to have this one fly by and give us a pretty good look. These are a fairly large bird, much larger than most of the other finches and things you'll see flying by. And they have these nice patches in the wings. And um, the males actually have a bigger kind of white section here in the secondary feathers. This would be, uh, I'm not the best at aging, this would either be a female or maybe a young one. I'd have to, to look it up for sure, but it's different than the adult males. But in any case, any evening grosbeaks have white patches in the wings fairly large bird and a fairly distinctive call note. They have kind of two different calls. One's kind of raspy and the other has a little bit of a trill to it. Um, but it's something just from seeing them a couple of times over the past few weeks, I've really learned to recognize that call note and get it in my ear. So when this one was coming, you know, right away, the first, first time it calls, I'm able to, to know that it's an evening gross beak and try to spot it and get photos. Here we have another adult sharp shinned hawk. So in the field, we saw the small size, which you can tell just by the speed of the flap and um, you know just looking at the bird in general. Um, very squared off tail, even a little bit of a notch to it. Small head, kind of that cute face where the eyeball looks really big. Um, the blue extends all the way from the top of the head onto the back of the bird. So this is just a classic adult sharp shinned hawk. Here we have a red tailed hawk that I would say is on the more heavily marked end of what we see. You can see it's got really dark patagial bars here, pretty dark big belly band, maybe a dark throat, kind of hard to tell. Um, it's an adult, so it has the dark trailing edge to the wing and the red tail with even a bit of a black uh, band near the tip of it. And a lot of the red tails that we saw and we'll see more photos of were on the more heavily marked end of the spectrum. And these are ones that you tend to see later in the season that may be members of the northern subspecies, also known as Abieticola. And I believe that that's still technically part of the eastern or Borealis subspecies, but it's something that over the past 10 or so years, there's been more and more research done into it, trying to determine if they're actually a separate subspecies, um, you know, and how to categorize them scientifically. But the bottom line is for hawk watchers, as you get into November and later in the season, you start to see more of these red-tailed hawks that are heavily marked like this one. So it's just something fun to look out for. Here we have another red-tailed hawk in a glide. Again, you see the dark patagial bars and the belly band. This one's a juvenile, so it looks a little bit lighter overall underneath just because it doesn't have that dark trailing edge to the wing. So the wing looks like it doesn't have as much of a border to it and the light shines through the wings a little bit more. 
Um, doesn't have a red tail, would have kind of a brown tail with bands, but doesn't show up too well in this photo. Here we have another bald eagle, and I think I would call this one a juvenile. Um, see the dark head, getting a little bit white on the underside, and it's got more more white overall in this area than is typical, and a little bit more on the, the lighter end of the spectrum. But to me, the the you get these um, translucent inner primary tips, a little bit of light shining through. I see it on this wing as well. Looks like um, not there's not any different length feathers, like feathers have been replaced. So I would call this a juvenile. Um, some people actually in the field were thinking this was a golden eagle. Um, not sure what they were seeing on it that they thought that. Um, maybe they, with binoculars, they weren't seeing how much white it had here in the, the wing pit areas. Because remember, golden eagles would never show extensive white in this wing pit or armpit area. Um, when golden eagles have white, it's in the center of the wing and the base of the tail. So when you see this kind of plumage, yeah, it has a, a brownish head that you might mistake for the golden nape of a golden eagle. But um, yeah, when you see this much white on the underside, that's bald eagle, not golden. And plus it has a fairly large head. Just the shape isn't quite right for golden eagle. Here's another red-tailed hawk. And again, this is on the more heavily marked end of the spectrum. You can see a pretty big dark belly band on it dark trailing edge of the wing and you can see the bit of a black line on the tail as well so maybe another northern here's another occipiter we can see it's got that long tail this is a sharp shinned hawk really squared off tip to the tail kind of a small head you can see that that uh, blue color extends all the way from the, the head to the back no pale nape on it so kind of that cute face with the big eyeball and small bill so adult sharp shinned hawk here we have another immature bald eagle. Again, when you have white on the, the belly and into the wing pit areas, that's always bald. Plus this one's got a gigantic head on it, much different than the small head of golden eagles. Another red-tailed hawk, this one in a soar. Again, you see these dark patagial bars and the belly band even from a distance. And adult, so it's got the dark trailing edge and the red tail. There's another juvenile bald eagle. So you have the brown head, brown underside white in the wing pit area and these feathers here but an even trailing edge to the wing since all the feathers are the same age another immature bald eagle i think this one's actually um, an older immature so the wings look like they're all the all the feathers are the same length because they've all been replaced already um, you see that the tail is mostly white just a little bit of brown still and the head kind of has that osprey look to it um, although from this photo it looks a bit dark but i bet if we saw that from the side it would be a mostly white head with a little bit of black on it um, you know mostly dark wings and underside of the body with just some splotchy white here and there here we have a juvenile red-tailed hawk again dark patagial bars and the belly band juvenile so no dark trailing edge to the wing and no red tail kind of a brownish tail with some banding after seeing some sharp shinned hawks go by when this one came by you would notice it was just a bit a bit larger feeling just in the way that it flew the way that it flapped and you can see the head actually sticks out quite a bit and you can see that blue on the head kind of ends and you can see it's got a pale nape to it um, you know again that's maybe not perfect from a photo of this distance and angle but it's another supporting field mark but overall just the shape with this big head let us know that this is a cooper's hawk compare that to this sharp shinned hawk which has a really squared off tail and the smaller head with that kind of cute looking face Here's a red-tailed hawk gliding overhead with that classic bulky shape. And we can see the dark patagial bars and the belly band combined with the dark trailing edge of the wing and the red tail because it's an adult. Compare that to this adult red-shouldered hawk. Just a slightly different shape, less bulky looking, and plus the overall color pattern. A lot of orange underneath and then you get this nice black and white striped pattern of the wings and the tail. The tail looking like a blackboard with thin chalk lines on it although this time of year um, there shouldn't be any broad-winged hawks still left around so um, we're not confusing red shoulders with broad wings based on the tail but if broad wings were around you would have the thicker look it would look like a single thick white band kind of in this area of the tail broad wings do have multiple bands but from a distance you only see one but on the red shoulders just these really thin white bands here's another juvenile red-tailed hawk so you can see the dark patagial bars. This one's pushing its forward, its wings forward quite a bit, um, just because of the the way it was flying. Really dark belly band. We can see how clean this upper breast area is. Really pale throat. 
and uh, no dark trailing edge since it's a juvenile. Although in this photo, it looks like there's a little bit um, and the tail wasn't red. It's kind of got that lighter colored banded tail. So um, this, this bird's actually kind of funny because it's it's a combination of kind of looking pale underneath, but then the, the belly band and the patagial bars are pretty thick. On these juvenile red tails, it's a lot harder to um, to identify what's an eastern versus what's a northern subspecies. So um, you're better off just sticking to the adults, but kind of an interesting looking bird with that really big belly band. Here's another juvenile bald eagle. So again, dark head, dark underside of the body, white in the armpit area, and a even trailing edge to the wing because all the feathers are brand new as of the summer and none have been replaced. And again, when bald eagles start replacing feathers, the ones that are um, grown in are slightly shorter than the juvenile feathers. So if this were a second year or a third year bird, you would see that some feathers would be longer than the others. Here we're just seeing these kind of pointy tips to, the, to each feather, which is typical of juveniles. Here's our only falcon of the day. You can see these nice pointed wingtips and this falcon coming in was flapping relatively fast, kind of a small bird overall, but you can see really dark coloration overall on the underside making this a merlin. Here's another red-tailed hawk. So again, dark patagial bars in the belly band, and it's an adult, so it has the red tail and the dark trailing edge. Here's another juvenile red-tailed hawk. So in showing the same field marks that we've already talked about a bunch of times. Here's a bald eagle that is not quite a full adult, but is almost, you can see it's got the white head just with a little bit of dark coloration still on it, mostly dark underneath with a little bit of white. So probably next year, this bird will look like a full adult. And you'll see that this bulge here, and this, we've seen it on a couple other photos. I forgot to point it out. Um, when we talk about a bird having a full crop, that's the bulge in this area. And that just means that it ate recently. It's kind of a, um, a spot where the, the food is stored, but you can see that bulge just indicating that they recently have eaten. Here's another one of the highlights of the day. Here we have an immature golden eagle. And actually we had a golden eagle in the morning, but it was a really distant look, um, just kind of a scope view straight out in front of us. And then it jumped off the ridge and went across the valley. Although when I watched that one, I did get, I was following it in the scope to see where it went. And it actually tucked into a stoop and went all the way to the ground and disappeared into the trees. So that was really cool to see, but I wasn't able to get any photos of it because it was so far away. This bird we picked up as it was gliding towards us along the ridge um, in the last hours of the day. And uh, that's typical at a place like Hawk Mountain. You can pick the birds out in front of you. And if there's a good northwest wind, they're just going to follow the ridge and come right over top of you or just off to the side, as the case may be. But for a golden eagle, first of all, we see that golden color to the nape here. That's where the name comes from. Kind of a small head overall compared to bald eagles. But the other thing we see are the white patches. They're these white patches in the center of the wings, right? It's not the armpit or wing pit area. It's not splotchy all through the coverts. It's, it's right here in the center of each wing and also the base of the tail. So for the immature golden eagles, a lot of times we're looking for those three white patches, one in each wing and the base of the tail. Along with that shape, again, they're small headed and all of them show a golden nape that's really beautiful when the sun hits it. Here we have another angle of the same bird as it went by. And you can see this angle, the head looks a little bit bigger, but still looks it's quite a bit smaller than this long tail that they have. And again, you can see the white patches in the wings. So just a really nice look at a golden eagle. Here we have another common raven. Um, we can tell ravens from crows, mainly just by the, the uh, behavior of them. They like to soar around. Crows are usually flapping. Um, ravens just kind of soar around and are very playful. Um, their wingtips sometimes look somewhat pointed from a distance. This photo doesn't show it very well. Um, they have kind of a big beak to them, usually a shaggy throat. And the, their tails are kind of a diamond shape. The outer tail feathers are quite a bit shorter than the central ones. So depending on how they're holding it, you get this kind of diamond shape to the tail. Um, they just look a little bit more elongated than crows as well and they have a deep croaking call that we were hearing throughout the day. So um, had maybe a, about a dozen or so ravens hanging around throughout the day and providing some good entertainment. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk that's quite heavily marked, so possibly a northern. Here's another look at a quite heavily marked red tail. You can see the big dark patagial bars. 
uh, the belly band. Another thing we look for in the northerns is kind of these um, coloration that drips from the throat onto the upper breast. This one kind of shows it a little bit. Um, this bird does have a dark throat, which is a, another good sign of northern compared to eastern. Um, so definitely um, on the darker end of what we're seeing. And this bird actually hung around for a little while, and here it is diving or stooping, as we say. I don't think it went all the way to the ground, but it, it tucked and dove for a few seconds, giving kind of a, a cool angle. You can see how aerodynamic they get just as they dive straight down. And here's another look, and you also see what are called the alula feathers, which are these little feathers here. Um, usually they're tucked underneath, but uh, certain positions, like this one was just kiting in the air, so kind of staying motionless, facing into the wind, and uh, the alula feathers popped out a little bit. So something that's neat to see. You don't see those feathers very often. And another look, I think this is the same bird. Um, but in any case, it was up above us and kind of turning its head and looking down at us, wondering what we were doing. Here's another red-tailed hawk. And again, this is probably another northern. You see it's pretty heavily marked underneath. And the color of the head looks, looks a bit darker as well. It's another field mark you can use for the northern subspecies. Here's yet another look at a pretty dark red tail. Again, probably another northern. And the wind picked up in the last few hours, and that's why we started getting a steady number of red tails passing by. Um, with northwest winds at Hawk Mountain, that keeps the birds right on the ridge. Most of the day, the winds were a little lighter. Um, the birds were probably using thermals more. But as it got towards the end of the day, the thermals were weakening and the wind was picking up, and that drove the red tails and eagles and stuff onto the ridge. So it gave us some pretty nice looks in the last few hours. Here's a bird that's kind of interesting because when I first looked up at this bird with binoculars, I assumed it was going to be a falcon because of how pointed the wingtips look. But actually, I think this is just a sharp shinned hawk. You can kind of see that long squared off tail. And um, they can just be deceptive when they're going away from you like this, where the wings can look really pointed, especially if they're tucking those wingtips back in a glide. So this is actually a sharp shinned hawk rather than a falcon. Here's another red tailed hawk, this one with the sun hitting it pretty good, making it not look that dark. This might just be a standard eastern bird. Um, but again, you see the dark patagial bars can make out a bit of the belly band, but again with the, the photo it kind of washes it out. But the overall shape and everything also let us know that this is a red tail. Here's another adult sharp shinned hawk. And again, this one has a really big crop here. So that means it would have eaten just before the photo was taken. Here's another red tailed hawk. And you can see how bulky that bird looks, typical of red tails compared to the other buteos. And as we came into the end of the day, we had a few harriers start to come by. Here's the top side of an adult male northern harrier, which are sometimes known as gray ghosts. You can see the white rump patch here and just the overall gray coloration. This photo doesn't have a bird in it, but I just thought it really showed how the um, the fall colors were still popping, even at this time of November. A lot of trees had lost their leaves, but um, just really pretty when the sun was hitting certain sections of the forest down below. Here's another really dark red-tailed hawk, almost certainly a northern subspecies. Just see that big dark belly band, kind of a dark head even with the sunlight hitting it, and you could just see um, a lot of markings on the upper breast where that throat kind of dribbles down to the belly band. Looks like pretty thick patagial bars. So I would call this one a northern or abieticola red-tailed hawk. Here we have another adult male northern harrier or gray ghost. You can see that they're white underneath, kind of have a grayish head, then white, and they have these dark secondary tips. So just really beautiful birds, especially when the sunlight hit them. And you can also see the, a bit of the white rump patch. Here we have another red-tailed hawk. You can't see the patagial bars because of the shading, but you can certainly see the belly band. Here's another northern harrier. Again, this one jumped off the ridge and was cutting across the valley. Kind of neat though how the sun was hitting the bird, but the forest in the background was in the shadow already. Gives a nice contrast. This is what we would call a brown harrier, so it's not an adult male. It's either an adult female or a juvenile of either sex. They're the brown ones. It's just the adult males that have that unique plumage. If we got a closer look at this, we could tell if it was a juvenile or an adult female, but from this photo alone, I probably would be hesitant to call it for sure. Here we have a female type purple finch, meaning it's a kind of just a brown one. It's not the bright red adult male. And um, purple finches, we see that 
kind of uh, white eyebrow. There's actually two white lines. You get the one up here and the one down lower, and they have this kind of interesting tail shape to them where it's a bit of a forked tail. But again, um, most of these were calling as they were flying around, so um, they have kind of a really distinct, uh, really distinctive chip note as they're flying, so we heard it coming and knew to take a photo. Here's another adult male northern harrier cutting across the valley below eye level. Here's the same bird with the sunlight hitting it really nice, giving us that underwing shot. And the same bird as it still had the light hitting it, but the background was going into shadow. And I ended up staying until around 4.30, and the full moon was just rising as we were wrapping up the day. You can see a turkey vulture down below it here, but just a really beautiful day from sunrise to sunset. And a shot of the moon as I made my way down back to the parking lot. If we take a look at the hawk count report for the day, um, big thanks to the counters who were Rebecca McCabe and Marzia Verducci. So the uh, migrant raptor totals for the day that they counted were two black vultures, three turkey vultures, 11 bald eagles, six northern harriers, 21 sharp-shinned hawks, two cooper's hawks, five red-shouldered hawks, 55 red-tailed hawks, two golden eagles, and one merlin for a total of 108 migrants. And I will also include a link to my eBird list at about 35 species for the day. And you can go there and see all of my photos and totals from the day. All right, I hope this helped give you an idea of what you can expect to see at a decent day at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary in Pennsylvania in early to mid-November. Now, if you're watching this video shortly after I upload it, today is actually a very rainy day, November 11th, but this weekend... Um, Saturday, Sunday, even into Monday, the winds are looking good. Um, I mentioned how warm it was for this day where it was like t-shirt weather. Well, that's going to completely change tomorrow as this cold front comes through. Very cold, strong northwest winds. Should be a really good weekend. Should be a lot of red tails migrating and hopefully a lot of golden eagles and maybe also a few goshawks if we're lucky. I'm hoping to make it up on Sunday. We'll see if I get there, but um, just a really nice weekend to be out birding anywhere in the Northeast with these favorable Northwest winds as we come into the final few weeks of the fall 2022 hawk watching season. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.